be talking about coaching and how you can use coaching to do two things, develop talent within your organization and engage employees in this organization. We're going to be looking at it from two perspectives. One is that because managers are busy people. Managers have 10 tons of things on their plate and if you ask them to do coaching, what's their answer? Don't have time. Don't have time. I have absolutely no time. I have too many employees. What do you want me to do? So what we're going to look at is a simple coaching model, something that doesn't take a lot of time. That actually puts most of the onus on the employees, not on the manager. Okay? And finally, we're going to realistically say, you know what? You can't coach everybody. Pick a few people. Don't pick everybody. Pick your top performers. I was talking to somebody earlier about talent management, right? Talent development. You've got to go with when we want somebody to do something. We always start off with talking about why. What's the business result we're trying to achieve? If I want you to reduce your call average handle time by 10%, why? From a business perspective, why is that important? So we always start off with or include desired business results. In order to achieve those business results, what do people need to be doing that, that they're not doing today? What do people need to be doing? What is the required performance? And then finally, what is it that they're doing today? And is there a gap? If there's no gap, we got no problem, right? If there's a gap, we want to know why. There you go. Coaching is three things. It's a two-way interactive process of communication. We are talking one-on-one -on -one with one employee. Okay? What we're doing is we're facilitating a discussion. We're using questions, and you're going to hear questions come up over and over again. We're using questioning as a way to facilitate discovery. Okay? So how do we know what the employee knows unless we ask them? And how do we know unless we listen? So we're going to be looking at a coaching model that uses questions and uses listening in order to help people self-assess. The other thing that it is, it's a method of building courage, self-esteem, responsibility, and cooperation. We're using some techniques in here called self-assessment, disclosure, and feedback. Now that sounds really highfalutin and stuff. All it is really is what we're talking about is we don't want our employees to come to us every single time they have a question, how am I doing, 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 how am I doing. As managers, we don't have time for that. So what we want to encourage is that they take the responsibility for self-assessing for determining how they're doing. Okay? They're using us simply for verification. Okay? So that's the other uh, second part. And then the third part uh, on the bottom part of uh, page 8 is a commitment to superior performance. This isn't about just being huggy or being nice. Okay? It really is about performance. And so as we're working with employees, we want to identify what performance they want to or need to do better in in order to succeed on their job or to plan for their next career development step. So it's about performance. It's not about being nice. So you can see what we've done. We've asked one question to open the conversation. We've asked, so what did you do well? What did you do that worked? We've asked that twice. And we've now asked twice, what would you do differently? And that's it. Okay. So we focus here on two, we focus here on two. Then we close the conversation. So I think if yeah, you continue using the scripts to build that relationship and using the customer's name, continue doing that, and now add on top of there, you know, adding a script to the end of the conversation, I think you're going to do much, much better in the next week. Why don't we get together in a week from now and see how that's gone for you? That's coaching right there. That's coaching. So our coaching conversation, we have question number one. And it could go along the lines of, I know you've been working on uh, getting along with uh, a couple of the more belligerent employees. Okay? I know that that's one of the things that you're working on. And I know that you've been doing it for over the past week and a half. How's it been going for you? Okay. Go ahead. Oh, okay. Sure, why not? Okay. Uh, you know, <laughs> you know Pete, Pete's, Pete's still a little crazy, but you know, I, can, I can bear with him right now. And, uh, and you know, Jimmy keeps trying to send me out to the bars with him. And I just, I just, no, yeah. yeah. Well, it sounds like there's kind of a mixed bag then. Think about the past week and a half. And what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to uh, tell me what has been going well. What have you tried that's worked well that allows you to get along with those employees? Oh, you know, I, I, I'm trying not to jump to too many conclusions with Jimmy, even though he's trying to bring me to the bar, and I just think he's a drunkard. But, you know, I let that go. And, okay. I to, you know, <laughs> and that's important because sometimes, you know, maybe that's his only way of socializing. So it's good that you don't jump to conclusions. What else have you, what else have you done that went well? 
Oh, well, um, Pete and I started talking about fantasy football. You know, we're both kind of interested in that. So we kind of developed a common bond with that, so that kind of helps work a little and bit. And how did you find that common bond? I oh, just kind of, you know, asked him a couple questions, just saw what he's doing, saw That's some stuff good. on his computer. I didn't tell you that, though, so. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm assuming it's more on break time. So, asking those questions is really important to find out what other, you know, what the employees like and, and to get you know, some sort of common bond built with them. And it could be about fantasy football, it could be something. That's good. What would you do differently <coughs> if you had to replay this whole week over again? What would you have done differently? Um, I'd probably try to, ask, try to find out some more of Jimmy's interest outside of the bar. Okay. So I can, you know, make some comedy. Okay, so trying to get him outside yeah. of, you know, thinking drinking is kind of the only way of socializing. Maybe there are other things. Do you have any suggestions that you might want to suggest to him? Um, I don't know. Maybe we'll try to get him in uh, Pete Nye's fantasy football. Okay, like there you go. That might work effectively. What else would you have done differently? If you were to do one more thing differently? Oh, I'd, I'd probably try to, you know, maybe eat lunch with Jimmy or something. Okay, a little bit more that's now. probably a little bit more, you know, kind of acceptable within kind of what we typically know as management building relationships. That's good. I think you would. So if you were to, you know, kind of do the whole thing over, keep doing, uh, you know, not building on those assumptions, uh, you know, looking for those common bonds, but also now using some more, maybe more traditional ways of building bonds by doing lunches and things like that, and including some of the other employees in yeah. your family. I think that might work well. Try that over the next couple of weeks. Let's get together in two weeks and uh, you know see what, see what you've come up with, okay? Sure. Sounds great, thank you very much. So let's hear it for Nathan. Many of you are involved in training. You have seen this graph before. The graph talks about improvement over time. Behavior over time. If people go through training, behavior improves. Without any sort of reinforcement, behavior goes back down. And performance, which is what we're interested in, dips after training a little bit, a little bit of a learning curve, and then it might go back up. What we're suggesting is that without coaching, without some sort of management reinforcement, that's what's gonna happen. With coaching, that second graph that you have on page 25, this is what's gonna happen. Behavior will improve and stay improved. Performance will improve and continue to improve as long as you do these things. After training, provide resources and tools, provide coaching and reinforcement, and provide metrics, some sort of reward and recognition. Coaching is the untold hero here. Okay? It's the one that doesn't cost anything. Okay? It takes a few minutes on the manager's time. Thank you.